what we're seeing happening in Ukraine is quite similar to the way that uh, the Russian um, military intervention happened in, in Syria in terms of, you know, the level of, of attack on civilian targets. Um, you know, cities like Aleppo just flattened. Uh, it's very similar to what happened in Chechnya in the 1990s and early 2000s. You know, this is what the Russian military can do. Uh, uh, Tim, it looks as if after the, the destruction of the Kirsch Bridge, which was which is a cherished piece of infrastructure to Vladimir Putin, he, he was there for its opening. He followed its construction. It's a symbol of Russia's claim to, uh, to Crimea, as well as being strategically so important. Now that has been blown up. We've seen what happened today. It looks, Tim, doesn't it, like a ratchet effect, uh, which has led to now escalation and can only lead to more escalation. Is that right, do you think? I think it. I think it probably is. Um, I mean, everything you just said is obviously is obviously factually correct. Uh, but also, of course, it's a it's a personal affront to Putin. I mean, the, the guy who's front and center of all of this, of course, is Putin. And trying to see our way through how he feels, what he thinks, and so forth, and how he's going to react is very, very difficult. But yeah, that that is a clearly a very bitter blow to him, and he suffered a whole series of blows over these last few weeks. So. I don't think there's any doubt that he has made a conscious decision to ramp up. He has got to respond. He's still doing it kinetically, as in using conventional weapons. Um, I don't think there's any doubt that that's not going to go away. There is this old expression, escalate to de-escalate, but in conventional warfare terms, yeah. I don't think that's what's going, to be, what's going to be happening here. And the other issue, I th it's been very interesting this, trying, trying to understand his words. He used the words infrastructure quite a few times in his talks. And he's used the words terrorism. Um, and those are designed, I think, to prepare the Russian people and to sort of set the framework in which they're thinking in that this is terrorism, not war, in yeah. inverted commas, as in conventional war. Uh, and we know that terrorism has dominated in many ways over the last 20 years, particularly Islamic terrorism, terrorism and so forth. And then this infrastructure business, I think, is he's saying you're hitting our infrastructure. We are now going to hit your infrastructure. And he's talked about the fact that they're going to dismantle Ukraine. Now, we all know that actually bombing very rarely works. I mean, John Simpson, actually, interestingly, earlier on in the BBC today, was saying that his, in, in his experience, it never works. It, I think it does have a big effect psychologically. Mm. But if we're just going to see now tit for tat in terms of weapons, tackling infrastructure, hitting infrastructure, then I don't think there's any doubt this thing is going to ramp up in its intensity. What, what is your judgment, Jenny, on the, on the, the significance of, of what we've seen over these last couple of days? I think it reflects the fact that Putin really doesn't have very many ideas when it comes to how to deal with this war. I mean, he has a very limited vision about what the future could be. He tends to look to the past for his inspiration. Um, he tends to repeat the same actions and policies and practices again and again. So what we're seeing happening in Ukraine is quite similar to the way that uh, the Russian um, military intervention happened in, in Syria in terms of, you know, the level of, of attack on civilian targets. Um, you know, cities like Aleppo just flattened. Uh, it's very similar to what happened in Chechnya in the 1990s and early 2000s. You know, this is what the Russian military can do. It's not a highly trained, highly professional, well-equipped and well-disciplined service, uh, but they can destroy civilian targets. Um, and, and this is, a, I think, the, the stage at which we're at is that Russia is doing what it can do yeah. um, to punish and, and to seek revenge. I mean, Jenny, do you think that Putin has has painted himself into a corner that he's, he's set himself on this spiral of, of escalation, whether he wishes to or not, that perhaps he'd like to find a way out of this because he can't win this war. Uh, but on the one side, he has the, the elites of Russia. We were hearing this argument earlier on. It was an interesting analysis. On one side, you have the elites of Russia whose fortunes are at stake here, at risk of seeing everything everything lost. On the other on the other side, the hardliners, people like the leader of Chechnya and uh, of those, those commentators all over Russian media saying on and on, get harder and harder and harder. He couldn't back away even if he wanted to now. So he's trapped in this cycle. Is that your analysis, Jenny? I think I think he's less trapped than, than we might think. I mean, if you think about it, when the war first began, when this mass invasion first began in February, there were a period of several weeks where it was clearly all about you know, decapitating the Ukrainian military, uh, armed forces and, and politics, um, and then, you know, taking control of the whole country. 
And then he pulled back from that and said, no, 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 it's all about reinforcing our position in the Donbass region. It's all about a much more limited strategy. So I think he could certainly reframe um, the, the, the scope of the exercise. It wouldn't be particularly easy, but he could certainly do it. Mm. And I think what we need to remember is that a lot of these um, factions, yes, they have influence and yes, they're clearly pushing him in certain directions. Um, but they're very much made by him. Yes. Um, and so, you know, I think he's still the one who can pull the strings if he chooses to do that. Yeah, look, here's here's a, 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 a one of our listeners um, a, a, with, with this on, on, it doesn't give a name, so his or her mind. Um, it says, John, it feels like Ukraine's taken a very worrying turn. Well, that's for sure. But Putin's backed into a corner, worry he'll lash out. It feels like the doomsday clock is a few seconds closer to midnight than ever, ever before. Tim, when it comes to a drastic response from Vladimir Putin, Putin as and when he finds himself in a tighter and tighter corner. We discussed the possibility of a nuclear strike you know, over and over again for very obvious reasons, but there are other tools at his disposal yeah. when it comes to a, a catastrophic response, yeah. aren't there? There, there are, There's the energy supply, most well, obviously, but there, there are data links which could be destroyed, which would have a potentially disastrous effect on, on Western economies. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. I, I do... <laughs> I think people would, again, need to keep this into, into context. That talk about the doomsday clock, etc. I mean, I can understand it, but I do think we need to be uh, a, a little bit, have a bit more wisdom than that. You're absolutely right. There are lots of different ways that Putin can respond. I don't think there's any doubt he has to regain, in his mind, he has to regain these provinces, and then I think he will probably be prepared to negotiate. Right. But in order to do that, he's going to have to use other methods. Now, um, Aleppo was mentioned. When we talk about weapons of mass destruction, as you rightly say, we're not just talking about uh, nuclear. We're talking about um, serious cyber attacks on infrastructure, bringing down all sorts of systems, be it the Internet, be it energy, be it other things. We're also talking about potentially chemical weapons, which he has used and has supported the use of in Aleppo, uh, supporting Assad regime. And of course, the, the biological weapons. Yes. I don't think he's going to go down the biological route, if I'm honest. I'm not convinced he will use tactical nuclear weapons. If he does, I'm absolutely convinced we will not respond with tactical nuclear weapons. But chemical, I think, is certainly an option. And and data, cyber, uh, you know, major attacks on the infrastructure using that sort of technology is absolutely on the agenda. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that's true. Yeah, an attack on data links would be um, a direct attack beyond Ukraine, Ukraine's allies. That means the West. That means Britain. It means it means America. George. Well, Tim or Jenny, I just wondered how you think the West might respond if Putin did go after, for example, data links. Would we retaliate in kind? Um, well, let me go first. As I said, I, I, I don't think we would respond in, for nuclear. Nobody's going to want to have a, have a strategic nuclear exchange uh, or even a tactical nuclear exchange on the basis of four provinces in, in Ukraine. But I do think we would, if there was use of chemical weapons, if there was use of major... because. Uh, for many people, a mass cyber attack, data attack, is the equivalent of a, of a weapon of mass destruction right. because, because of the destruction it can cause to everything from hospitals to you know government infrastructure and, and, and other things too. So my sense is that at that point, NATO has got a really difficult decision, but I think it would make the decision that it would have to cross a line. I don't think it will involve land forces in Ukraine, but it could well involve air component um, and use, utilizing NATO air. Um, but I also think that we would respond electronically. Mm. OK, yeah. I mean, and bearing in mind, I think this is true because I read something about it the, the, the other day. Some of these data cables are the size of a broom handle mm. and, you, and you can absolutely paralyse an economy and public services and the infrastructure around, well, a country like ours. Comparatively easy if that's what you set out set out to do. Anyway, uh, uh, Tim Cross, great to have you with us as always. Major General Chim, uh, Tim Cross. And thanks again to Jenny, Jenny Mathers. Do come and, and talk to us uh, again.